Good evening, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me. I'm T Payne, and welcome to Let's Learn Python. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side to jump to any specific sections or examples. Today we'll be using Python 2.6 and Python 3.3 by popular demand. So hooray for whining, yay! <laughs> and you can download these versions of Python from python.org slash get it. Today we'll be focusing on the min-max algorithm. This will build heavily on past lessons, so feel free to go back and watch them again if anything is unclear. All right, so the min-max algorithm, also called the mini-max algorithm or the MM algorithm. So what is it? This is an algorithm designed for a perfect information game like checkers or chess, where the computer can see everything that is going on. There is no mystery to it. So it may not work as well for card games. The win and lose states of the game are represented by positive and negative infinity. The algorithm is designed to decide what is the best move for each player when it is their turn. We are going to be focusing on games which only have two players and each player is represented by positive or negative one, where positive one is human and negative one is a computer. So how does this work with a miniature game of checkers? Well, first, we create a tree of all possible moves for all players to a certain depth. This can get very messy with complex games like chess, where there are so many different moves. Each position on this tree has a heuristic value, which is basically just the state of the game in a single value. So think of this number as who's winning and who's losing. So if there's a situation on the tree in which player one wins, it would be represented by positive infinity. And if there's a situation where player two wins or the computer, it would be represented as negative infinity. And if it's neither of those situations, then we're somewhere in between. Now that the tree is created, the algorithm then goes to the bottom of the tree and works its way upwards, deciding what is the best possible move for each player when it is their turn. This is a way of pruning out all the bad moves for that player. And then we take a step upwards and repeat it for the opposite player. And so we remove all the bad moves for that player. Let's examine this a bit closer. Say you're the positive player and you have a choice between zero and positive infinity. In other words, you have a move that does nothing or a move that wins you the game. You're going to choose the one that wins you the game, right? Absolutely. So now we take a step up and now we're deciding what the best possible move is for the negative player. Now we don't want positive infinity. We don't want you to win. So if we have the option between positive infinity and zero, we're going to choose the one that's closer to negative infinity. So we're going to choose zero because we don't want the human to win. So this process continues all the way up until there are no more branches. Only one has been chosen as the best possible move for the, that given player. Could be the computer, could be the human. So now let's implement it. We're going to be creating a simple game about picking up sticks. Let's say there's a pile of 11 sticks and each player may only pick up one or two sticks on their turn. The goal of the game is to be the player that picks up the last stick. If you grab two sticks when there's only one left, you lose. So does that make sense? By the way, that's supposed to be an illustration of a guy holding sticks. I draw good. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and examine the code I've already created. So at the top, we have this statement that says from sys import max size. So since computers can't actually assign a value to infinity, instead we're going to pick a max size of an integer. And so that's what this is, max size. It's just a really big number or a really small number if we make it negative. And so we're going to use this value to represent infinity or when, the, when a player wins or loses. All right. So right after that, we have a class called node. This node is what's going to make up the tree. Each individual element of the tree is going to be a node. And the way we're going to generate it is we're going to have each node generate children based on how much depth there is. Okay. So in the constructor, we have I underscore depth, I underscore num sticks remaining, and then a value. And here below we assign these values. So to begin, I started naming all the variables with a very specific 
naming structure. I represents integers, n represents the nodes or the class node that we've created, and so on and so forth. So what is I depth? Depth is how deep we are into the tree. We start off at a value of something like four, and then with every iteration, we decrease that value till we reach zero. Next, we have the player number, and this is either positive one or negative one. Then we have the sticks remaining for that given choice. Below that, we have below that we have I underscore value, and this is the value that each node holds. In other words, it is the game state. It's either negative infinity, zero, or positive infinity because of how we set up our game. Finally, we have our children as an empty list. Right below that, we call the function that will create our children. So in this create children function, first thing we do is we check to see if we have passed the depth of zero. If we go negative, then it will stop the loop. And this is important with every recursive function. You should have the very first thing be some way of stopping the recursive function. So that's why we had that. And then we have for range one through three. And this is basically for how many sticks we are going to be removing. So since we're only going to choose one or two sticks, we need to generate the child for each choice. So this is so this V is holding the value of how many sticks remain. And then we just create a new child and add it to the children list. And so that will actually cause it to create more children until the depth of zero is reached. So this right here, this one line is what's going to cause the depth to be minimized. Note that when the new child is created, the depth is subtracted by one and the player is actually flipped or multiplied by negative one. We pass down the amount of sticks remaining. And then finally, we call this function called real val and pass in the sticks. And this is just a simple function that determines what the value of the game is. Basically, if that player has won or overdrawn the amount of sticks and lost. All right, so that's it for this guy. And we're gonna scroll down just a bit. And now we're gonna cover the algorithm itself. The algorithm is pretty simple. The implementation though is what's the tough, tough part, as we saw up above. So the first thing we do with the algorithm is we check to see if we are at a depth of zero, or if we have reached a node that is a win or lose condition. So in other words, they are equal to max size or infinity in our case. If either of these cases are true, then we simply return the value of that bottommost node. It's basically passing up the best choice up to the parent node. Next, we create this variable called I underscore best value. And what we're doing is we're assigning a value of infinity times whatever the opposite direction it wants to be. So if you're a positive player, you typically want to go in the positive direction. So we would start with negative infinity and vice versa if we were a negative player. I just noticed that this code could have been optimized right here by replacing a child right here, this variable, in the place of i and removing the range and length of this guy. But we'll go ahead and keep that. So now we're gonna iterate through all of the children one by one for all of our possible choices and run the algorithm on them. What this will do is it will drill down to the bottom of the tree reducing the depth as it goes and flipping the players as it goes. Then that algorithm will return a value as up above if it's the bottom most or if it has reached an infinite size, or if it could just be zero because it had reached depth of zero and returning that value. Then we have this very interesting code here. And what this does is it's checking the distance of where we want to be from where we currently are with this current child. If this value is closer to the goal of our positive or negative infinity, then we're gonna go ahead and store that value. Finally, when we get done, we're gonna go ahead and return that value. Right here, I've included these lines as debugging. Um, this was helpful for finding out what the values were for each branch of the tree. That's all. Let's go ahead and scroll down a bit. And now here's our implementation. Right here is a simple function I wrote that's a simple win or lose checker. All it does is check to see if that player has made a selection that will win them the game, lose them a game, or if the, the computer has won or lost the game. That's all. Scrolling down a bit more. All right, so scrolling down a bit more, we're gonna see the final bit of code, which is actually going to call the function. So right here, we have a check to see if this file is the main file that's being run. And then we set up some default parameters for how many sticks we're starting with, which is 11, how much depth we want the computer to calculate to, and that's four, and then who the current player is starting as. 
and that's going to be one, which is going to be the human player. Next, we have some simple instructions for the player and how to play. And then we start the loop. And this loop says, as long as there are sticks, then keep iterating through this function. This game will keep going until there are no more sticks. After that is just a simple print statement that says how many sticks remain and how many would you like to pick up. Then it requests an input. And this function right here gets input from the user. Now note that this function will actually not work in Sublime Text Edit as far as I'm aware. However, we will end up running this code in idle. Right here you'll see a line that says i underscore choice equals one. And this was a simple debugging bit of code. And so I wouldn't have to enter in the numbers again and again. Next, we subtract from the sticks total how many the player actually entered in. After that, we have a win check to see if the player has won. And if the player has not won, then, then the computer takes control. We flip the player to become negative one. After that, we create the tree that's gonna, that the algorithm is going to run on by calling the constructor for node, passing in how much depth it is, what the current player is, and how many sticks remain. This value best choice is actually going to hold either one or two, which is the number of sticks it will choose at the very end. Then we store its best value, which is going to start off as uh, the opposite amount of infinity than it wants. Then it iterates through the children. Then it's going to iterate through the algorithm, much like you saw up above in the algorithm itself right here, where it's running through the children and calling the function on itself, going all the way, drilling all the way down. Now, why did I do that? The reason being is because I wanted to store the two different choices that it was going to have. And I wanted to figure out which one was it going to choose, which one was going to have the better heuristic value. After it decides, this would result in the values 0 or 1 rather than 1 or 2. So I just add 1 to the best choice to get the correct value. Then I have a simple print statement that's just a debug for what is the final value. I reduce the stick total by the amount that the computer has chosen. I do a win check, and then I reverse the player again finally. And that's it. That is the min-max algorithm. you got to admit, that's pretty cool. Play it for yourself. I'm going to go ahead and play it real quick so you can see this in demonstration by right-clicking and opening it in idle. And then I'm going to press F5 to run it. Now notice this is in Python 3.3.3. It also works in 2.7.6. I've tested it myself and it works great. So now I'm just gonna enter one whole bunch of times. One, comp chooses two, then I'm gonna enter one. Comp chooses one, I'm gonna enter one again. Comp chooses two, I'm gonna enter one more time. And notice the comp wins. Now let me try that again and I'm just gonna enter two all the way through it. Run it, two, enter two, enter two, and the comp wins again because it's actually figuring out what the best moves are, and it's winning. See if you can beat this computer. It's less than 100 lines of code, and it is pure brilliance, in my opinion. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Definitely hammer out this code so you have it for future reference. And definitely take a few minutes to investigate these final challenges. You are a brilliant programmer, and I'm sure this will be a piece of cake for you. Please leave me a comment below if you feel that this helped you. Please do me a huge favor and like this video, and subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for your support and keep the dream alive. Mm -hmm.